Next on Worcester News tonight, the woman at the center of the so-called House of Horrors case learning her fate in court. Plus, a ceremonial groundbreaking in Worcester. Construction for the new home for the soon-to-be Worcester Red Sox is underway. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. More on those stories in a moment, but first a round of rain is heading towards the area. There could be strong storms and downpours. The rain could also impact tomorrow morning's commute. Here's meteorologist Pamela Gardner with more on what we can expect. Well, good evening to you. I'm meteorologist Pamela Gardner. We stay warm and muggy with a partly cloudy sky through 7 o'clock, but the rain approaches by 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. We're tracking scattered rain and thunderstorms across Worcester County. Temperatures in the upper 60s, but those heavy showers could lead to some localized flooding. Any shower or storm that does develop could set down 1 to 2 inches of quick rainfall accumulation. So here's our hour by hour timing and overnight into tomorrow morning, the heaviest of the rain will move through and then tapering off, but then additional spot showers possible again Friday afternoon. I'll have more on the rain timing and in the totals. Plus when the humidity will go away, the weekend looks fantastic, but in the 10 day forecast, we could be tracking more rain at the end of the 10 day and maybe our first 90 degree day. More to come in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Pamela. Worcester is one step closer to welcoming its new minor league baseball team. The city held a ceremonial groundbreaking today for Polar Park, the new home of the Worcester Red Sox. The ballpark is expected to be ready for spring 2021, just in time for the start of the Worcester Red Sox season. Our Brittany Schaefer was at today's groundbreaking and joins us live now from the future site of Polar Park. Brittany. Olivia, the ground has been broken and construction can officially begin for the $100 million ballpark. The ceremony was full of people. Hundreds and hundreds of people were in attendance. It's kind of hard to picture now, but in two years, right where I'm standing is going to be left field. You can see a lot of people were here. Speakers say the ballpark should mirror some of the landscape of Fenway, but of course we'll have the sights, sounds and smells of Worcester. The people who play on this field reflect our city and our country with immigrants from dozens of countries. Our city will help them grow, our fans will cheer them on and make them feel at home. This field will be their home and our home. Dreams and legends will be born here and some will come to the end of their careers here. And I think we should just take a moment to just look around, appreciate where you are now and more so look forward to two years from today when this will literally be open for business for baseball in Worcester, the new home of the Worcester Red Sox. This is one of those milestones in Worcester's history, like the building of City Hall or the opening of Union Station. Pivotal moments in the overall story of our great city. We know we have the right neighbors, the right naming rights agreement, the right business community, the right location, for the next new and long chapter of the AAA Red Sox affiliation. Once again, thank you to every one of you from the heart. Today marks about a year and a half from the first game in April 2021. City manager at Augusta says he's most excited for the big life moments to take place here at Polar Park and says today for everyone, this was the big life moment watching the groundbreaking and it's also a big moment in Worcester's history. Live in Worcester, Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. All right, thank you, Brittany. And members of the Boston Red Sox front office were in the city for Thursday's groundbreaking. Our Cam Jandro caught up with the team's president after the ceremony. Hello, everybody. Cam Jandro here at the groundbreaking of Polar Park. Next to me is president and CEO of the Boston Red Sox, Sam Kennedy. Sam, thanks for taking the time. Big day for the city of Worcester and also for the Boston Red Sox. How important is today's groundbreaking for the big club? 
Well, the uh, the AAA franchise for the Red Sox is the lifeblood of, of the Red Sox and our baseball operations. So we're really excited to keep our AAA franchise as close to Fenway Park as possible and to have the team being led by Larry Lucchino and Charles Steinberg and Dan Ray and Janet Marie Smith is a, is a real competitive advantage because they'll build a great ballpark that helps our player development system and that's really what we care about the most is, is making sure that we have a competitive team on the field in Boston and they'll all come through Worcester and uh, that'll be a great thing. Is it awesome having the team in the state of Massachusetts right down the street from Fenway Park? Yeah, it's really helpful. You know, we have uh, Ben Crockett and Brian Abraham here today, the guys that run our minor league operations. They really appreciate it. You know, sometimes you can have a minor league affiliate two, 3,000 miles from your home ballpark. That can be really tough. If we want to call a guy up on any given night, they just uh, hop on the pike and they could be at Fenway within an hour. So that's a real help. Sam, thanks for taking the time. Again, President and CEO of the Boston Red Sox, Sam Kennedy. That's all from the groundbreaking Polar Park. I'm Kim Jandro. Back to you in the studio. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Cam. Switching gears now, the Blackstone mother found living with the remains of her three infants in rundown conditions was sentenced in court today. A judge found Erica Murray not guilty of second degree murder last month in what has been dubbed the House of Horrors case, but she will serve time on the lesser charges. Our Roslyn Flaherty was in court today for sentencing and joins us live now with the latest. Roslyn. Olivia, Erica Murray will continue to serve jail time. She's already uh, served a majority of what she was sentenced to, and the judge wished her good luck on her way out. The mother at the center of the so-called Blackstone House of Horrors case is sentenced to 68 years in prison. Erica Murray has already served nearly five years, so it means she has one to two years left behind bars. She was hoping that she would not have to serve any additional time. In 2014, a neighbor discovered horrible conditions inside her home. Investigators later found the remains of three infants. Murray was acquitted of second-degree murder last month. Judge Janet Kenton Walker found her guilty of assault and battery on a child and cruelty to animals. I cannot take into account or undertake to punish her for conduct other than that for which she stands convicted. So I cannot punish her as some might want me to, for the fact that the remains of three babies were found in the closets. Judge Kenton Walker also sentenced her to five years probation, including mental health treatment, once she is released. She didn't intend to do it, and she didn't recognize that it was being done. But I don't think you can look at what happened to these kids and not say, you know, it's, it's, it's not a serious offense. It's serious. Her attorney says she'll likely be eligible for parole in about a year. He says all of her children live with the father's family. Live in Worcester, Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. A Rutland police officer who took a selfie in front of a bar where a woman was stabbed to death last week is found to be in violation of the department's social media policy. The department launched an investigation after a picture of Sergeant Troy Chauvin in front of O'Connor's restaurant was put on Facebook. The post received complaints from the family of Amanda Dabrowski, the woman who was killed in a knife attack at the restaurant. Officials say they do not believe the post was malicious in its intent. The report did not say if there was any disciplinary action against the sergeant. For the first time this year, the West Nile virus is detected in mosquitoes in Massachusetts. The Department of Public Health says they found the virus in a mosquito collected in Boston earlier this month. No human or animal cases have been detected in 2019. In 2018, the state reported 49 human cases. A Worcester Street has become a popular place for illegal dumping. Neighbors say they are fed up with the trash and are hoping the city does something about it. Our Gretchen LaRosa explains. Now they're dumping boats, which is kind of crazy. Two boats abandoned on the side of Granite Street. People who live in the neighborhood are calling for more to be done to prevent illegal dumping. This is embarrassing for them to come drive by this and it's just going to be a, you know, a stop to this. Mike Rucci lives on Granite Street. He says the stuff dumped along the side of his road is an eyesore and he wants the city to crack down on the culprits. DPW, they do a great job cleaning it up, but you're wasting taxpayers' money uh, just for them to come here to clean it like every two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. James LaFleur works in the area. 
He says dumping the boats isn't smart because they have serial numbers and can be traced back to the owners. If the last owner actually sold it, the last owner know who he sold it to, and it gets traced back. Then they get for an abandonment, and the fees can go into thousands, especially considering that this is protected lands. The city of Worcester wrote tickets and taped warnings to each boat. They want the owners to remove them from the side of the road. Rucci believes the growing problem extends beyond his neighborhood. It's all over Worcester, too. You know, the trash, I mean, I read about it all the time. It's, it's got to stop. Granite Street residents say the area has become a target for illegal dumping because of its secluded location. Lafleur says some people have a lack of respect for the community. People don't care. It's very frustrating. If you're going to buy a boat that originally cost $30,000 and you can't pay $200 to get rid of it, you shouldn't own it to start with. This scrap metal yard is just about a half a mile up the road from where the boats were illegally dumped. Employees here say they can't use the boats because they're primarily made up of fiberglass. They say this problem has been getting worse over the past couple of months. Gretchen LaRosa, Worcester News Tonight. Nearly $900,000 in grant money will help support projects at WPI in UMass Lowell. Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito announced the grants at WPI Thursday. They're from the Massachusetts Manufacturing Innovation Initiative, a program the Baker Polito administration launched in 2016. WPI says the money will go towards a robotics training program for kids. They're going to help us advance technologies and educational programs that are really about bringing the next generation of technology to the market, just figuring out how you scale it up and how you um, manufacture and make it. These grants are all about helping us innovate around making. And the training program, Cobots for Kids, develops, tests, and deploys a curriculum for summer and after school programs targeted at middle and high school students.